good morning and a very warm welcome to our service here today at Cockpen and Carrington. Whether you're here in person this morning or watching on the recording, you are most, most welcome today. And uh, as we continue in our Easter season, uh, we have another uh, wonderful Easter story today to share together in looking at. And that's the story of the two disciples who find themselves on the road to Emmaus and are joined on the journey by Jesus, although they don't recognize him at first. And we'll have a wee look at all that unfolds and all the transformation that takes place for them and their growing understanding uh, of all that's happened to Jesus along the way. And a recognition that for us too, on our journeys of faith, we can find Jesus coming alongside us at every moment to encourage and to guide. Uh, just a couple of dates, also just um, mentioning uh, Sunday the 7th of May as a day when um, we'll start Forest Church, outdoor church at three o'clock at the Burnbury uh, car park. Um, and that is a time of discovering God in creation. It's really outdoor church. It's often called Forest Church, but it's outdoor church. And for families and individuals who might like to do a fresh expression of church, discover God in the outdoors. So that's then. And then a date for the diary, a wee bit away, but just for a date for the diary that all of the churches here in Bonnie Rig again, having a second joint uh, service on Sunday, the 25th of June at three o'clock in the afternoon. Again, up at the Last Wade Leisure Centre. But I think we're looking at having a smaller space booked uh, so that we don't have any competition uh, of trampolining going on alongside us this time. Um, but that is 25th of June at three in the afternoon. But I'll ask uh, Liz now to come and bring a few other intimations. Just firstly, to remind everyone that there will be no service here in church next Sunday. It will be a joint service with Last Week and Rosewell, and it will it'll take place at Last Week Church at 10 a.m. next Sunday. So that's no worship here, but at Last Week Church at the earlier time of 10 a.m. Also, there will be no natter this Thursday in the hall as it's Cockpen and Carrington's Guilds Together turn to host. This is like a district and we all have to take a turn. And we've, It's always on a Thursday and we've been very fortunate that we haven't had to take a turn uh, since the natter started. However, um, we do have to take a turn and it will be at two o'clock but any members of the Guild uh, who will miss the natter but feel they want to come along, then you'd be more than welcome and it'd be nice to have a good number from our own Guild to represent us. So that's two o'clock on Thursday. And their own Guild uh, will meet a week on Monday, not this Monday, the 1st of May, and I'm announcing this now because obviously we won't be in church next week, and that will be a two o'clock meeting, an afternoon meeting on the 1st of May when we will celebrate the coronation. So we ask everyone that wants to come along, you don't have to be a member of the Guild, feel free to come and join us. It'll be a jolly afternoon, but we would ask that you wear something either red, white or blue, or all three would be even better. And just a bit prior notice again that they will be holding a Paddington Toast and Marmalade morning on Saturday the 20th of May in the hall at 10 o'clock. There will be a tombola raffle, guess the sweets in the jar and the bacon stall. So if you could come to that, that would be great. And also we're looking for donations for the tombola. So thank you. Very much indeed, uh, Liz, for those things. Now, as we've thought about an awful lot before coming to worship God, let's just take some moments of stillness as we uh, gather thoughts and hearts to worship him together this morning. Amen. 
And if you'd like to, there are a couple of responses on your order of service or on the screen uh, to join in together. Come to worship the risen Christ with open eyes and ears, minds and hearts. Come prepared, expecting, desiring to discover and know more of Christ. And we're going to join together to sing to God's praise uh, in our opening hymn, which is the one, Blessed be the everlasting God, the Father of our Lord. We join to sing. join hearts in prayer. Let us pray together. Father God, love abounding, creator of bluebells and larks, sustainer of the stars and galaxies, redeemer of everything that has life and breath, we worship you today creator of cherry blossom and ladybirds, sustainer of mountains and oceans, redeemer of all through Jesus Christ, your son, we praise and thank you today. In this Easter season, we continue to celebrate you, Lord Jesus, in your risen presence with us. You met with people in so many different ways, ordinary ways, walking, talking, eating with them, but also extraordinary ways, because you were there. You are an extraordinary God. We worship and adore you. Lord, for the times 
we hear the scriptures and our hearts don't burn within us as they did for the disciples on the road of Emmaus. May you forgive us. When we don't recognize you in our midst because we're just not looking, may you forgive us. When we're too blind to see you in the simple things, may you forgive us. When we're too wrapped up in ourselves to treat strangers with the respect they are due or look the other way, may you forgive us, Lord. Living God, when our heads are down and we have lost hope, May we see Jesus and know his encouragement with us. When we feel that we are living in a confusing and hostile world, may we see Jesus and be reassured by his abiding presence and guidance with us. May we delight in your presence with us now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May we bring you the praise due your name. And may we be renewed and refreshed in our time of worship and fellowship together. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today is something of a, an all-age service for this fourth Sunday of the month, and as we move into exploring our Bible passage for today, that wonderful account of the road uh, to Emmaus and the two disciples on it, for them, the big picture was not clear at all when they started. They didn't fully understand all that had had to happen to Jesus, and they didn't recognize him when uh, he joined them on the road. They took time to see the big picture. And so as we lead into that uh, today, and we'll read about in our passage, there's a picture on the screen that's covered up at the moment. And I'm going to go through, and each, each time will be a little square removed. And so the question is, what is the picture? And how quickly can you discover the big picture behind uh, on the screen? So there is the first part taken away. It doesn't give away too much <laughs> at the moment. A second little bit. <gasps> Not much to give away yet. Any thoughts? Anything coming to light? Mm -hmm. That might make, give a bit more of a picture. Not quite. It is Jesus. Well done, Elizabeth. Yes, it's... We've, just take a few more. That one probably begins to give you. Jesus breaking the bread. And as we come to a reading this morning, we'll discover that's when the two disciples fully recognized Jesus, when they sat down at a meal at Emmaus and he broke the bread and they saw who he was and began to understood a bit more of what was going on. So we'll come to that in a moment, but we're going to sing again just now. And it's another lovely Easter hymn. Uh, now the green blade riseth from the buried grain. Let's join to sing.
scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. The walk to Emmaus. On that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow did not recognize him. Jesus said to them, What are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stood still with sad faces. One of them, named, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening here these last few days? What things, he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went, down to the, they went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back saying they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, how slow you are to believe everything the prophets said. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself and all the scriptures beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As he came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further, but they held him back, saying, Stay with us, the day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two men then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they recognized the Lord when he broke the bread. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word, and to his name be the praise and the glory. Amen. Thank you, Bill, so much for reading there. And we're going to continue in our Easter celebration, thinking about uh, the wonderful risen Lord Jesus in our midst, as we join to sing the hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. And with the chorus, Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory. Alleluia. Let's join to sing together.
Let's pray. Lord, as we come to explore your word together today, we remember those two disciples on the road and how they had that wonderful experience of you sharing the scriptures with them. And so we come with that same eagerness as you speak to us afresh today. Lead us by your spirit in our learning and growing and understanding and in our responding and cherishing you with us on the road. Thank you, we pray in your name. Amen. <coughs> Professor Tom Wright, whose commentary I was looking at this week in approaching the passage for today, suggests that the account of these two disciples on the road to Emmaus is possibly the finest scene that Luke sketches in his gospel. And many of us might agree. The drama that unfolds there has everything. Sorrow, suspense, puzzlement, gradual dawning of light, unexpected actions, astonished recognition, and a flurry of excitement and activity to finish. And there is mystery, too, in the passage, in not really knowing who Cleopas's unnamed companion was. Perhaps it was a friend, but many people think that it was possibly and probably Cleopas's, Cleopas's wife who was with him on the journey. And we have that sense of how was it that those two disciples did not recognize Jesus at first. It was, of course, quite a common thing in the different accounts of encounters that people had with the risen Jesus that they didn't always recognize Jesus at first. And there seems to be a sense in which his resurrection body and perhaps all of our resurrection bodies are the same and yet will also be a little bit different in some ways. So Jesus' followers didn't at first always recognize him. It's possible too, perhaps, that Cleopas and his companion are so filled with dismay that they're blinded by their grief and their confusion. They're so preoccupied that they aren't open to recognizing Jesus when he comes quietly alongside them. Some of you may remember the story of Joshua Bell, uh, the wonderful violinist. Uh, if you listen to classical music, if you listen to classic FM, you'll be aware probably of John, uh, Joshua Bell as a wonderful violinist. But back in 2007, he went on a busking experiment in the metro in Washington, D.C., as such a wonderful, well-known violinist, he wanted to have a little test about whether the public would realize when he was playing there just what was happening alongside their busy daily commute. In the middle of the morning rush hour, his baseball cap on, quite a feature of Joshua Bell out and about wearing a baseball cap, he opened his violin case and started playing. And over a stretch of just over 40 minutes, he played six well-known classical pieces. The Washington Post newspaper were there with him to see what happened. And out of 1,097 people who passed by when he was playing, only 27 gave him money. Only seven actually stopped and listened for any length of time to his wonderful playing. And in total, Joshua Bell made only $52.17. That's about £42.18. But $20 of that was given by somebody who did actually recognize who he was. And all of that little experiment spoke of a world in which people are so often too preoccupied to notice the wonder of what is actually happening in their midst. And so it might have been for these two disciples. They were so bowed down by sorrow and confusion that they were kept from recognizing Jesus as he arrived. 
But Tom Wright also points out that the fact that Cleopas and his companion didn't recognize Jesus at first seems to be linked with the fact that they couldn't recognize that the event that had happened to Jesus did really belong to the story of how God had planned to bring salvation and redemption for his people. At that time, most people were thinking that God would save them from suffering, from the suffering that they were experiencing by being uh, occupied by the Roman army. All their hopes had been placed in Jesus to be the one to deliver them from all of that. And he had acted and spoke with the power of a prophet who many thought were coming to give that deliverance. But with his death, they had not only lost a dear and revered friend and teacher, but all of their hopes of deliverance had crumpled as well. Jesus' words to them uh, as he's listened to all of their problems, as he says, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken might seem a bit <clears throat> scolding. And yet, <clears throat> with those words, Jesus then, with such love and patience, takes that time to walk alongside these two disciples all the way to Emmaus, and all the time unfolding all of the passages in Scripture that spoke about him and explained so clearly that the Messiah had needed to come and to suffer and die and come into his glory. What an amazing exposition to have been party to two hours of listening to Jesus expound the Old Testament and share with those two disciples listening to him all through the books of Moses and the prophets and helping them to begin to understand all that had happened to Jesus and showing them that it was foretold, showing them that it needed to happen in order to fulfill God's lasting salvation for his people. The entire flow of the story of the Bible points to Jesus and is fulfilled through him. And Cleopas and his companion come to understand that God's people were not to be saved from suffering, the suffering of being occupied by the Roman army. In God's plan, he would redeem his people through suffering, the suffering that Jesus took upon himself when he was crucified and died upon the cross to take away all that separates us from God. And as Tom Wright again says, Cleopas's puzzled statement, they crucified him, but we had hoped he would redeem Israel, would shortly, with a little bit of change, and change in understanding, become a joyful statement of Christian faith. They crucified him, and that was how he did redeem Israel. For the two disciples on the road with Jesus, their growth and understanding about Jesus, beginning and also beginning to piece together that big picture of all that it had to happen to Jesus makes their hearts burn within them as Jesus is speaking. But they still don't recognize him on the way, and it's only as they stop, as they're seated and watching and sharing, as Jesus breaks the bread for their meal at Emmaus, that their eyes are at last opened and they recognize it's Jesus. And so we see what an amazing transformation for those two disciples on that little journey on the road. From sorrow to joy, from utter despair to hope, from confusion to understanding, from an anxious walk to Emmaus, to an absolute excited hurtle back 
to Jerusalem to tell the others what had happened and to let them know that Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. In Luke's beautiful account, there is for us all <clears throat> an assurance of how we can be met on the way in our lives of faith when we may be troubled, when we may be downhearted with fallen hopes, and in the quietness have the sudden realization of Jesus being present with us, warming our hearts with all of his loving, abiding truth and presence. And in each moment of sharing communion together, as we break and share bread together, we have those moments to stop and to wonder anew afresh at Jesus' loving presence with us as our risen Lord and Saviour. And we too can come to be comforted and to be encouraged by Jesus being our all-knowing friend and guide in all times, in whatever we're facing on the road. We're going to follow that little reflection up with a little simple worship activity, which is where your page of dots and your pen come in. And uh, so you should have a wee page of dots. If you don't have a page of dots and would like one, uh, if you pop up your hand and one will be supplied, plus a pen. But with your little sheet there just now, if you could um, take your pen, and as they're on the uh, dots, if you can draw out a cross uh, through your dots uh, with the pen, just as you would like, something fairly substantial on the sheet there, uh, joining the dots, as it were again, as for those two disciples, they were joining the dots to see the picture in understanding all that had happened to Jesus. So join up the dots and draw a cross that you would like on your sheet there just now. Lovely. You can make it bigger if you like, but something of a cross that you can see. Okay, are we ready? With something of a wee cross there before you. And we're going to use that just now uh, in saying together um, words of a hymn. It's a Methodist hymn, actually, from the Methodist hymn book uh, entitled On the Day of Resurrection. And it follows the story of the Emmaus Road as it goes through the verses. And so as we're doing that, um, as you'll see there on the screen, if you have your, your cross ready, if you take your finger first of all, uh, and as we're saying the first verse of the hymn together, just having your, a finger on the center of the cross that you've drawn to start with. That's where we'll begin. And we read uh, together the, verses, uh, the first verse there, uh, the words. On the day of resurrection, to Emmaus we return. While confused, amazed, and frightened, Jesus comes to us unknown. And we'll say this little prayer together. Come to us, Lord Jesus, and help us to know you more. <coughs> and next, if you trace your finger to the top of the cross, as we read together verse 2. When the stranger asks a question, what is this which troubles you? Meets us in our pain and suffering. Jesus walks with us unknown. And a little prayer again to say, walk with us, Lord Jesus, and help us, especially when things don't seem to make sense. 
And next, if you trace your finger all the way down from the top to the bottom of the cross on your drawing. And we say together the words of verse 3 of the hymn. In our trouble, words come from him. Burning fire within our hearts tells us to us the scripture's meaning. Jesus speaks to us unknown. And a little prayer response. Speak to us, Lord, and help us to know more about you. And then taking your finger back up to the center of the cross from the bottom. You pause at the center and say uh, verse 4. Then we near our destination. Then we ask the stranger in. And he yields unto our urging. Jesus stays with us unknown. And our prayer response. Jesus, stay with us and help us to find time to spend with you. And then taking your finger out to the right side of the cross, we read verse 5. Day of sorrow is forgotten when the guest becomes the host, taking bread and blessing, breaking. Jesus is himself made known. And our prayer, Jesus, help us to recognize you in our worship and out in the world. And then finally, the sixth verse. If you take your finger across to the left-hand side of your cross, and we say, opened eyes, renewed convictions, journey back to scenes of pain, telling all that Christ is risen, Jesus is through us made known. And our little prayer, Jesus, we pray that others may see you in and through us. And then tracing back your finger just to the center of your cross, we say, Amen. Amen. So a quiet response there to that story and seeking Jesus with us in all we are and do. And we join to sing a hymn that focuses on that also as we sing the hymn, Oh, for a closer walk with God a calm and heavenly frame.
and we continue our worship now with our offering. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in humble thanksgiving, we bring our offerings today, given here and in other ways, along with the love and service of our lives. May you take all that we bring, we pray, and use them for your good and the good of all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and we continue in our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for ourselves and others. Let's pray once again. Lord, as we have reflected on your presence with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we rejoice that as we reflect back on the week that has passed, you were with us every step of the way, even if we couldn't see you at the time. You were there in moments of pain and sorrow as well as deep joy and fun. We thank you that you are always present, whatever our circumstances whether we can feel your presence or not. And as we go into a new week, help us to look more closely for your presence with us. God of resurrection, God of hope, we pray for this world in all its fragility, its beauty and its pain. As we think of Earth Day 2023 yesterday, so we give thanks for the complexity and the beauty of the world around us. We share in a few words from a prayer by Pope Francis for our Earth. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty not pollution and destruction. O 
Lord, we bring to you to the places and people who have been in the headlines this week. And in a special, we lift the nation of Sudan to you, praying that the violence there will subside and a peaceful way forward be found. And we continue to remember other troubled places, Ukraine and Yemen and Syria, Turkey and Afghanistan. You see these places even when they are out of the news. May you bring peace, restoring and justice, we pray. Lord, we pray for those who need a sign of your presence with them this week. We lift to you our young people back at school and in a special all those who are preparing for exams. We pray for pupils and students, teachers and invigilators in this very busy term. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We ask for your comforting presence to aid them in their pain, distress and uncertainty. We pray for wisdom and enabling for all those who look after them. We pray too for the lonely, isolated and the housebound and for all who care for them. And we pray for those who are sorrowful today. May you help them to know that your resurrection means that there is hope for today and tomorrow. And we pray for your church. We pray for the direction of our national church. May she walk humbly and hopefully in faith. And in our locality as Cockpen and Carrington Church family, may you grant us wisdom and discernment courage and perseverance, love and faithfulness, trust and hope in these challenging times. May we know who and whose we are, that our identity is found in you, our loving God. May we be accepting of change that is needed and walk in step with you to embrace it. And Lord, we turn to the week ahead of us you are already going before us, and we thank you that you are preparing our way. We commit the new week to you, asking that you help us see you at every turn. Guide us forward into all the new wonders that will greet us, and help us to share your love with all those we meet in the resurrection hope you have given us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we join to sing our closing hymn in celebration of Easter and our risen Lord Jesus in the hymn, Christ is Alive. Let Christians sing.
May the companionship of Christ encourage you. May the self-giving of Christ inspire you. And may the joy of the resurrection astound you and propel you into sharing with others the good news of our risen Lord Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you now and evermore. Thank you.